But if you don't sometimes speak out, if you don't uh, threaten to speak out, you, you don't grab their attention. And I would rather err on the speaking out part than staying silent. I met with four young girls. They had been um, sentenced to 30 years in prison for, and they claim um, these were obstetric emergencies, these were miscarriages. The state claimed that these were the terminations of pregnancy. And when I sat with them, and I had with me a full team, my, my office was there, and I think in, in, within the space of about uh, 10 minutes, we were all weeping, we were in tears, because the suffering was so extreme. I saw the president after that, and I said, why, are, why is it that all these girls are poor? I think in many, many parts of the world, uh, this is the point that uh, really strikes home, that time and again, the poor suffer all the consequences. I uh, first worked with the UN in 1994, 1995, in the former Yugoslavia, and I saw what catastrophes silence can bring. And I think from that point on, I was determined not to be silent when the uh, evidence before us was uh, presented. The real pressure on this job comes from uh, the victims and those who suffer and expect uh, a great deal from us. And, and that's, the, that's the, the pressure that I think matters most and has, is most consequential on us in terms of you know, the need to do the right thing. Our job is to defend the individual victims, vulnerable communities, marginalized communities. You know, oppression is making a comeback. Repression is fashionable again. I don't believe anyone holding this position, even if they felt differently, ultimately can conduct business in a manner that departs too radically from the way that I've done it or my predecessors have done it. Um, and I, I, my belief is if you try to depart, you know, you, you're going to hear it. And it, it will be extremely unpleasant for you because you're going to hear it from the very people who are suffering. The people who matter to me are the you know, civil society, victims, groups, human rights defenders. And if they said Zaid has, has done a good job, I'd be very content with that. If they said Zaid you know, could have done better, I'll have to learn to live with it and accept it. It's very difficult to tolerate uh, abuse of the UN when I keep thinking of the heroic things that people do in the field. And whether they be humanitarian actors or humanitarian personnel, my human rights people, the people who are monitoring, observing, and I take my hat off to them. I mean, they are, they are the, the, the UN that I will cherish and remember.